All right, I'm going to get started. Hopefully, it's about five minutes. Uh, so my talk is about how to run an internship. Uh, my name is Michael, for those of you who haven't met me. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, I run Epicotus. We're a school where we teach people web programming. Uh, we take people who've dabbled in programming, and then we bring them in full time for four months. We get them coding for uh, at least seven hours every day. And then uh, after the four months, we send them out into the wild to work at tech companies around Portland and also, to some extent, to tech companies around the country. And uh, I've been doing this for coming up on two years now. Not quite at the point where I can say almost two years, but I guess coming up on two years. And uh, I'm in the middle of running our fourth class at Epicotus, which means that I really have no idea what I'm doing still. Uh, and so the last class, in the kind of the third time through, um, actually before the last class, I had this epiphany. I was like, we need to run an internship program. Uh, and I've never run an internship program myself. And I had really didn't know what to tell the companies who I wanted to participate. But I basically went out to all the tech companies I could find in Portland. And I said, hey, do you want interns? Um, basically, the only requirements I have for you are that uh, they would code for at least 30 hours a week. They would have a technical person to report to and to supervise them and to teach them the ways of the programming world. And uh, and, then, and it would be a month long and that they would have two so that, um, so that you know, they would have some support from each other and be able to work together. Um, and so, uh, so this talk today is going to be about what We've learned from that. So these were the companies that participated, 17 companies in total. We had about 47 students participate in the program. And these companies range from like two-person shops all the way up to you know a few dozen people working at them. And so they all did different things uh, because we really had such a loose structure. Um, and uh, and after, after it was over, I sat down and talked with every single one, talked with a lot of the students from our class who participated, and, uh, and tried to distill some best practices to share with the community uh, about how, about at least ideas about how to run an internship program. Um, so I guess just start off with like, why do companies like to run internship programs? And if you work at a tech company, uh, why might you consider running an internship program? Well, first of all, uh, it can be really fun. You get to work with brand new developers and be really their first, help them see what the, their first taste is of working in the professional development world. Um, and that, you know, that can be really rewarding. You can kind of shape what their outlook is and how they think about their relationship between themselves and their code and their job. Um, and so a lot of the a lot of the people who participated were uh, just at their company. You know, they said, "I want to do this kind of independently of what my company wants." It's something that's really important to me. Um, kind of from a more practical standpoint, a lot of companies who participated uh, are, you know, I'd say pretty much every tech company around town faces the talent shortage problem of how do we get good developers here? How do we get developers at all? How do we get people to apply for our jobs? And an internship program is a great way to build a pipeline of candidates. Of uh, you know, and this is. Obviously, you're not going to get senior developers out of it. But as long as you're in a position where you're like, yes, we want to have junior level developers working at our company, what better way than an internship? Uh, you, it's relatively low cost. Um, you know, some of the internships we did, so all the internships for us, we have three months of class. And then the last month, students have the choice, which most of them take, to participate in the internship program. And so it's really, it's an educational experience. So the companies, uh, the companies who participate are providing an educational experience. So for them, sometimes, depending on what they're working on and if it's something that is, you know, generating revenue or if it's an open source project or whatever it is, it ranges from unpaid to generally much lower paid than. Uh, than an entry level internship or an entry level developer position. So from a company's point of view, you know, it's a it's a relatively low cost investment of money. Um, it's more of an investment of time. Um, but uh, it's also low risk. It's a chance to get to see people, how they perform on the job, uh, to get to have them working with you and see who do I get along with um, and does does this work out? And so for a lot of the companies who participated, some of the practical considerations just weren't even there. It was just, hey, we are excited about junior developers. We're excited about mentoring. I want to work with these people. For some companies, it was more practical of like, hey, we may want to hire some people. Um, and for a lot of companies, it was somewhere in the middle of uh, just seeing how things go. So. Um, 
So as, uh, as developers, which I assume that most of the people in this room are, you know, a lot of times we're hired based off of our skill and experience and education doing programming of various sorts. And then as we get established in the company where we're working, we're asked to take on roles that we have no training for, like hiring people or managing people or running an internship program. So I guess just the first point I want to make is that running an internship program like hiring or managing or whatever else that isn't actually coding is a learned skill, just like coding is. Uh, just we have a lot less practice at these things. And so, um, and so going into running an internship program, the first thing is to try to see what's out there, to just like before you code, you're going to be taught how to, ta taught some ideas about programming. Um, ideally, before you start interning or start interviewing people, you're going to read about how to do a good interview. You might be mentored by somebody else. Um, so running an internship program, something that you can learn how to do, that you can improve on, that you can get better at, that you can learn about. And so hopefully some of these tidbits Will be will help you if uh, if you do run an internship program at some point. Um, so. And I guess also just to set a little bit of context, uh, these are all kind of suggestions. And these are, again, we've only run this internship program once through. We had the benefit of talking to 17 companies who participated in distilling down a lot of their ideas together. But these are not hard and fast rules. This is not the be all, end all, final word on the matter. These are some things that we've observed, that we've been told, that we've seen, uh, and are really some suggestions to keep in mind as you go. So one. One theme that, uh, that I saw was as I talked to all the companies who participated and um, ch chatted with a lot of students who participated was that, uh, was that the internships tended to be most successful when interns were really closely integrated with the company. Um, and so this can look a lot of different ways. But, uh, but the, I guess the bottom line is you, know, you want to, ideally in an internship, you want to have the interns working alongside of you, in communication with you, friends with you. Um, and we'll touch on a lot of different strategies for doing that. But at the, be at the beginning of setting up the internship program, you kind of have to decide, like, what are the interns going to work on? And a lot of that affects how they get integrated into the company. And so we identified three broad categories of internship, what do we call it, They're internship projects that, uh, that interns got assigned to. And so the first one was fully integrating into the company. And, uh, and actually, a, in, a, a lot of companies ended up doing this, just saying, hey, Interns, by, by week two or even week one, you'll be pulling tickets off the queue just like every other developer who works here. Um, you'll be doing bug fixes that go into production. You'll be working on the same code that everybody else the company's working on. And this, for example, uh, Crowd Compass did this, where literally by week two, um, interns were just pulling off the same queue as all the other developers who work at Crowd Compass. Uh, another approach is to take kind of the main product or projects that the company has and carve off a piece of it. So one example of this was at Revelation Global. They wanted to, they wanted to have a feature where their users could upload video. And, uh, and this was going to be a big project. It, of course, integrated with all the other parts of the application, but it was sort of standalone. Like it didn't block anybody. It didn't. It didn't. It had. Re it relied on other pieces, but not really moving parts in the system. So it was something that could just be carved off and given to the interns to complete on their own schedule and time. And uh, then the third approach was a, a siloed project. So a lot of the um, a lot of the like agency. Uh, had this approach. They didn't want to have students working on client work for one reason or another, NDAs, billable hours, management, whatever it was. And so they had an, like an open source project or an internal app that they wanted the interns to work on. And, uh, and one example of this was PopArt. Um, they had a, uh, a Node.js based file uploading system that worked with uh, Microsoft Azure. And they wanted to add some features to that. And so the interns who had, none of them had touched Node.js before, uh, were trained up by somebody who was really familiar with Node. I uh, was really excited to teach more people about Node.js, and then they got to work on this project with him. Um, and so all three of these actually can work well, no matter, no, no matter what type of project it is. Uh, the other factors are much more important. But I will say that the full integration approach, it has this property of naturally assimilating the interns in. When you're pulling off the same queue, when you're working with other developers, you're naturally in contact with the, with the other people there. You're naturally asking for help from the other developers at the company. And so that, that does have the, the advantage of just naturally integrating the interns in with the team. If you're taking another approach, which again, can be totally awesome, uh, it's really important to make intentional efforts to integrate the interns in other ways and to make sure they're getting the support that they need and are feeling a part of the team. And so that is kind of the rest of the talk, is those other approaches. 
Um, so actually, I guess before the other before the other approaches of integrating them is uh, kind of before the internship starts. So you've you've chosen what you want them to work on. Now you need to prepare for them to actually get there. Uh, something that in hindsight is kind of obvious, but uh, but is not necessarily obvious if you haven't thought of it before, is just doing a clean install of whatever they're going to work on. You know, if you're a company that hasn't brought on a new developer in a few months, there's a really good chance you have some kind of crazy dependencies that nobody really knows about if you don't have a clean machine to go through and install and see what's going on there. Uh, things will probably break if you haven't done that in a while. So just really good idea, like erase a laptop or spin up a virtual machine with nothing installed on it and go through top to bottom, doing an install, seeing what happens, seeing what breaks, and documenting it as you go along too. So it's really just a step-by-step -step recipe for getting set up. And then the interns are going to feel so much more productive when they can actually go in there and be successful in getting it up on their environment quickly and being able to write code than if they're just fighting their dev environment for several days getting set up and you're like, oh yeah, that thing. That, we never did figure out what was going wrong with that. Uh, you know, trying to sort those out as you go along. And uh, Graph Alchemist was one of the companies that participated. And they were working on an open source uh, graphing library. And uh, they, they said that this was just the greatest thing to actually do this before the intern started, because they wanted to open source this project. And they were like, we need to make this easy for people to set up. So we kind of had to dog food that ourselves. Uh, and they, they said they really benefited from doing that before the interns came on. And then the interns were able to get up and running that much faster. Um, another really great way to prepare for interns coming on uh, especially if they're working on kind of integrating into the main team and just pulling tickets off the queue, is to start thinking about what features and bugs can the interns work on well before they start. So at Factor.io, uh, Ski is the head developer over there. They're a very small startup, but building a really cool product. And um, th it was three weeks, he said, before the intern started, that he started, whenever he would come across a bug that was non-critical, not super urgent, and was going to be fairly straightforward to fix, he would just flag it and leave it there. Or if there was a feature that needed to be built that uh, he thought, hey, this would be great to get out. Again, not super urgent. We'd like to have it out at some point before too long. Going to be relatively straightforward to build. Flag it for the interns. Intern started day one, they, and he also prepared uh, you know, doing a clean install. Um, so intern started day one. They got their dev environment set up. They had a couple really simple tickets. They fixed those bugs, built those features, and they had code running in production on the very first day, which was awesome for them to feel like, hey, like we're so brand new at this, and we're already having live code that, you know, uh, I don't know how many people use Factor.io, but that you know a lot of people are using right now. Um, and for Ski and the other folks at Factor.io, it's like this is awesome. We have these interns, and they're already contributing to our product. Uh, so okay, so you've got the interns there, and they're starting to work. They're gonna run into problems. Like these are brand new people. These are people who have not even finished this very condensed class that we've put together for them, and uh, and they're gonna need support from you. Um, so. Uh, so the first thing I'll talk about is kind of the technical side of the support, um, of what of running into problems, needing help, fixing bugs, etc. Uh, so one thing that we heard from every single company was that the interns didn't ask for enough help by a long shot. And you know this is for for the students who participated. You, from their point of view, it was like their worst fear was like, I'm going to ask a question and it's going to be stupid. I'm going to look like an idiot. They're going to know I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and so they, they ended up asking for help so, so little compared to what the companies wanted. And there was actually one, uh, I think it was Revelation, when they interviewed students, like what they were looking for is that they asked for help in the interview, in the technical interview. Uh, just pro tip for anybody who's interviewing for an internship, uh, ask for help when you run into a problem. Uh, good strategy in any interview, actually. Um, but uh, but yeah so so uh, Bunker, which is a small uh, small agency down in Beaverton that does a lot of Rails work, they uh, their head developer came up with a really awesome strategy for dealing with this. Rather than just continuing to beg the interns to ask him for more help every hour, if an intern hadn't asked him for help, he would go over and just look over their shoulder and see what they were working on and be like, are you stuck? What's going on? And most of the time, it was like 30 seconds, like thumbs up, I'm good, I'm making progress. And then, but you know, on a regular basis, it would be like, no, I've been spinning my wheels for the last 55 minutes. I have no idea how to go on from this. I really don't understand this error message. I can't find anything on Google about this. Help me figure out what to do to move on. And so that helped them stay really productive in the internships. And, uh, and it's something that I would recommend. You know, I, it, it might feel pretty aggressive to check in every single hour, but you know, if if, if it's a little less often than that, it's still better than nothing. Just going in and making sure that, making sure that they aren't stuck, making sure that they aren't spinning their wheels. And, uh, and then the benefit of that is that, you know, in 
instead of having them waste potentially five hours on something that might take you 30 seconds or five minutes to fix, then they're moving and they're getting stuff done and, uh, and they're feeling better and you're, getting, uh, and you're helping them stay productive uh, at their work. Um, so another, another important thing that we saw worked really well was we had this idea of sending internships in pairs to, uh, to the company so that they could ask each other questions uh, and help each other out before asking somebody at the company a question. So to kind of deal with that, like, I don't want to ask a stupid question thing. And also, you know, to legitimately try to ease the burden on the companies hosting them of not having to answer as many questions and help out as much. And so this just seems like a really simple thing, but just having the interns sitting side by side right next to each other, like even on the same desk, was great because they could, it was just it was zero cost to asking somebody questions. Like, it's amazing the, the cognitive difficulty it is to just stand up from your desk and walk over to somebody else and ask them a question. Like, it's, it's you know, it shouldn't be a barrier, but it's a huge barrier. And so having them sitting side by side was really helpful. And the client was just, uh, they, they were just like over the moon about this. They're like, why didn't we ever have two interns before? It's such a good idea. They were always sitting side by side. They were all, they like, they would hop together and pair program on something if they got stuck. They were always answering each, other quest each other's questions. When they did come and ask for help, they were really, they were able to be really clear about it because they'd already clarified it with each other. Um, so that, that turned out to be really helpful with uh, the internships. The last kind of technical support uh, tip that we that we heard from a couple of the companies, and especially at Daylight Studio, which is uh, a, um, a consulting shop uh, that does actually they do I think mostly PHP and some Node stuff, and so the interns there kind of got to ramp up on some different tools than they had used in class. Um, but they, uh, you know, most companies there was like, oh, this is the engineering team, and there's you know we worked with we worked with a lot of small companies, so it was like there are three people here, you can ask any of them for help. And at Daylight, it was like, yeah, you can ask anybody for help, you can hop on the chat room, but this one person, I think his name was Dave. Like, Dave is really excited about the internship program. He wants to, you to ask him questions. He is excited to answer your questions. When you have questions, go to him. If he's not around, of course, ask anybody. But just having that one go-to person, you know, it's, it's the paradox of choice, right? Like, if you only have one choice, it's really easy to make the choice. If you have a lot of choices, it's like, well, who do I talk to? Who should I ask? Who's the right person to go to? And, uh, and so it worked out really well for them to just have Dave as the go-to person. And of course, like plenty of backup if he was busy or out of town or whatever it was. Um, but just having that point person who was really excited and who was the one go-to person made it that much easier for the interns to get help and to move along and to be productive. So in addition to getting help writing code, there's the other side of, hey, these people have never actually worked as developers before. This is really scary. This is really intimidating. There's, you know, struggling with imposter syndrome, struggling with feeling stupid every day, uh, struggling with, you know, maybe things that are going on in the company that you don't realize. Maybe struggles with how, with working with the other intern uh, who's with them there or anybody else at the office. These are things that come up in any type of work, but especially for the interns, having, having some additional support beyond uh, supporting their code can go so far. Um, so one thing that, uh, that I would strongly recommend that anybody who has an internship program do, and honestly, anybody who's a manager of anybody else, uh, is just weekly, one-on-one, -on -one, process-oriented, non-technical check-ins. So this isn't your code review. This isn't, uh, this isn't anything that has to do with writing code or shipping product or anything like that. It's how are you feeling? Like, are, are you getting the support that you need? How is it going working with somebody? What is, like, anything that has to do with like the process. So at Crowd Compass, they did this, they actually are going to move to twice a week check-ins for their next internship because they thought that the check-ins were so important for improving their internship program, for getting feedback on what was working and what wasn't working. And they actually had a time, uh, I think in their first week where they had, they had expected it would take a week for the interns to do a certain amount of work. And that amount of work got done in like three, three and a half days or something. And the interns actually just didn't know who to ask or what to do at that point and were kind of left with nothing to do for half a day or or a day or something like that and it was it was in the one-on-one check-in they, that they discovered that this had happened and the interns were like oh we're very grateful to have this opportunity we don't want to like you know cause a fuss about anything but we were just kind of sitting there and uh, and it was through having a one-on-one check-in and asking about uh, what what was going well and what wasn't going well that they discovered this problem and they were like oh we need to have a way for them to ask for more work if they finish things early and also this is a great problem to have they're they're learning this stuff faster than we expected and they're doing even better than we thought that they would um, 
The last thing, which uh, is just, it's really easy to do, is have some sort of social thing. You know, it's, it's great to be working with other developers and to be coding alongside other people and learning all this stuff in the internship. But it's also, you know, you want to go to work and be friends with the people you work with. And when you're the new person, it's always hard to meet other people at work. And when you're the new intern, it's that much harder when you feel just, you know, like you're the lowest on the totem pole. You don't know anything. Uh, you feel like you're just so bad at all of this. And how are you ever going to be able to figure it all out? Um, and so having that support and having friends at the company, it goes so far to making a good experience, both in terms of just the interns feeling good there and the employees relating to the interns, but also, you know, kind of the, the productivity, the being able to say, like, hey, I'm friends with this person. It's easy to ask this person a question. It's easy to ask this person for help because, like, we know each other and we both have chihuahuas, I don't know, or whatever it is. Um, and so uh, a lot of companies did something along these lines, but one company, uh, Notch 8, they actually said every single Friday we're going to have lunch together. And uh, I was just like, and, you know, they're small companies, so it's easy to do, but, you know, all staff lunch and all the interns came along. And they really got to be friends that way. And that uh, all the interns there just had where they really raved about the experience and also they just they they had a great time they uh, the people who worked the the guy who was managing them at notch 8 um, really enjoyed getting to work with them and uh, getting to know them and it made the it made the technical parts of the internship go that much better too so just a couple of final thoughts uh, first of all it, Part of me feels like I just threw a lot of stuff at you, and now you might be thinking like, oh my god, if I want to start an internship program, I've got like this 12-point checklist, and this is just huge, and I'm probably just never going to start an internship program. Like, this is all just, these are suggestions. These are things that we've, uh, that we've heard work. Um, you don't, you know, I, I would say that the only thing worse than running an internship program where you aren't able to do everything on here is not running one at all. Uh, because it's such an amazing experience to be able to get to mentor somebody and, and watch them grow. And, uh, and, and addition, in addition to all the practical sides of like hiring pipeline and all of that. And, you know, just on kind of community basis, I'm sure that all of you have had somebody in your life who mentored you, who encouraged you to get into coding, who helped you when you were feeling insecure about whatever it was that you were working on when you were a new developer. Developer. And so getting to be that person for somebody else, it's really rewarding. Um, the, uh, the flip side of that is that running an internship is absolutely an investment. Like you're going to spend time doing that that you won't be able to spend time coding or whatever it else you, it is you do with your day. But the awesome thing is that the more that you invest up front in spending time with, you know, putting together these processes, in making sure that the that the installation of the dev environment goes well, in I mean if you really want to take it further, like spending an hour to a day pair programming with the interns, explaining things, whiteboarding them, the more you do that up front, the more that they have a really solid understanding of what's going on, the more they're able to be productive and uh, and you know, two or three weeks into the internship, they're able to really start cranking stuff out with less and less support. And uh, and that really goes for any type of hire, I would argue, at any level, the more that you invest up front in onboarding, the more that you get a return in bringing people on, that much more so for interns and entry-level or junior-level developers. Um, and finally, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, like. I've only run this internship program once, uh, and I definitely feel like I'm still learning about how to run it well. And I hope that all of you, if you are running an internship program now or down the line or take some of this with you, will experiment with different things. Uh, listen to, especially with the one-on-ones, listening to what the, what's going well in the internship and doing more of that, listening to where you can improve and trying to think of ways to make your program better. Uh, like that's, uh, we're, we've, got this, we've got this huge problem of the talent shortage, and I, I really believe that the only way that we're going to get out of it is by making big investments into junior developers. And of course, like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid because I run Epicotus. But uh, but internship programs like such an important part of that process, and so I hope that all of you, if you don't have an internship program already, you'll really think about what you need to do to get to a place where you can start one. If you've got one, thinking about what you can do to improve it, to expand it, to make it that much better. Um, I, if you have anything you want to talk about with me, uh, feel free to email me at michael at epicotus.com. Um, at Epicotus, we actually have like a, a specific person who works on connecting companies with our students, whether that's for internships or for jobs after, uh, after our class is over. Her name is Maureen. She's awesome. You can reach out to her, too. She's out of town, or she'd be here right now. Uh, if you're ever interested in hiring graduates out of our program, uh, you know, there's, they're scattered across town. There's lots of, I'm sure there's at least a handful of people here here tonight who have hired interns from, uh, or hired students from Epicotus who can tell you a little bit about what that's like. And, uh, and then also if you, we, so everything I just told you is kind of a summary of a report that I wrote um, that you can get in a beautiful PDF version from 
epicodus.com slash internship report. Uh, yes, Marcus has a beautiful copy of it there. Um, it was emailed out to the Ruby list uh, maybe a week or two ago. Uh, you can grab it there. You can email me for a copy, what have you. And I will take any questions now. Yes. Um, I just want to underline something you said. This is, these are the great tips for just onboarding in general. And not just <laughs> yes. is, oh, I've seen companies, I won't name any names, but I've seen companies fall down because they didn't have those steps in process. They onboard people and people are lost. Yeah, and you know, there's, the, there's kind of the philosophy of like, throw them in and if they're good, they'll swim. And if they aren't, then they'll sink and we'll fire them. And like, that's an approach, definitely, but like you, you uh, it's, it, like I said, you know, it's an investment. If you put some in, you, you will see returns on the investment. Uh, and you know, it does not say that everybody you ever hire is going to be great as long as you do everything well. But if you make those, if you make those kind of investments into your employees, no matter what level they're on, you're that much more likely to set them up for success and for productivity and just doubly, triply so for interns and uh, entry and junior level developers. Yeah. There's a, a really cool book called The First 90 Days, which uh, basically has a, a bunch of um, studies that show almost everything that's presented right now. So I'm not full of shit. You're not full of shit. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. You. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see where you were looking. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, could you talk about how it was for your students to really make the transition, for example, from no, from, from front-end JavaScript to Node.js, uh, or from Ruby on Rails to PHP, like uh, how that process was for them, as far as you uh, know? Yeah, uh, hard, definitely. Um, so at Epicodus, we we start off by teaching our students JavaScript and Ruby because we want them to be polyglots. And you know, if we look at where they've ended up getting hired and what they've been working on, we'd say at two thirds to three quarters are Ruby and JavaScript because they come in there already prepared for that. But another you know, quarter to one third are working in Java, C Sharp, PHP, what have you. It takes more time because there's that much more to learn. But having that foundation of two languages to begin with, uh, and we, and you know, again, I can only speak for Epicodus, uh, so your mileage may vary depending on where your interns come from. But uh, because we, it's not just front end JavaScript, like here's some DOM manipulation, but like here's actually how to write JavaScript and unit test in JavaScript and think through program logic in JavaScript. Like they are fairly well equipped to then translate those into, you know, back end JavaScript or picking up PHP or what have you. And varies student by student, it varies company by company, and right. the amount of support and training. Uh, we actually, the week before internships start, if they're working on something that is a different stack than what we're teaching, we give them a week to ramp up on that, to you know, spend a week studying Python so that you are at least have the foundations of the syntax and some vague idea of how Django's put together before you start. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Awesome. Anybody else? All right, well, feel free to email me if you have any questions at all. Thanks a bunch.